Richard Smith. I'm the commander of the 65th Medical Operations and Support Squadron at Lodge Field in the Azores, and I'm, uh, I'm Airman Stone's uh, commander. I have a prepared statement uh, from Airman Stone that I'd like to share with you. Um, this is, these are Airman Stone's words. I'd like to thank everyone for your continued support. Due to the ongoing medical appointments and therapy, I can't be with you today, but wanted to provide a few things on my mind. I am thankful for all of the medical care that I've been receiving, both here and in France. I have nothing but high praise for the occupational therapy staff at Lance Duel Regional Medical Center and the care and treatment that they've provided for my thumb. They've done an awesome job. I also want to thank Team Ramstein for the outstanding support and warm welcome that they gave us on our arrival and the continued support they're offering us. My home team at Lodges Field and my leadership there has been equally supportive and I wanted to express my thanks to them and everyone in my Air Force chain of command. For the American and international audiences, I am humbled with the amount of attention this story has drawn. I think everyone in my situation would have done the same thing. It seemed the only option I had I do know that the extensive Air Force medical training I've received provided me, uh, allowed me to provide first aid to a fellow passenger and potentially save his life and for that I am grateful. I hear on the news he is stable and getting the continued medical attention that he needs. I wish him a speedy and full recovery. Finally, thank you to everyone who has reached out to wish me and my friends well and who have called us heroes. Looking back and thinking of that fateful day, I know we did exactly what needed to be done. Thank you again for your continued support. I also have uh, some remarks that I would like, to, excuse me, apparently my arms are longer than I thought they were, uh, that I'd like to share with you. Um, as I said, I'm, uh, I'm Airman Stone's commander. Uh, you'll appreciate that for privacy reasons, there are some uh, details about his medical condition that I won't be able to share with you, and that's uh, that's just the same. I'm not a physician. I wouldn't understand those things anyway. Uh, what I can tell you is uh, since arriving last night, I've had the opportunity to spend some time with Airman Stone and his family. Uh, he's recovering. Uh, his wounds are healing. He's in good spirits. Uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, speak to some of his care providers, and the really good news is that uh, despite the severity of the injuries, I've been told that uh, in the coming months he'll be re uh, able to return uh, to full duty. Airman Stone's been in our unit since April of this year, and he's like a lot of other airmen that I've worked with over my military career. Uh, he is young, he's enthusiastic, he's smart, and he's eager. And uh, Airman Stone would be the first to tell you that what he did, uh, there's a long list of airmen in our unit who would have done the same thing. Uh, in fact, he'll tell you that uh, he's, not a, he's not a hero. He and Alec and Anthony and Mr. Norman, they did what just came natural. It was instinct, they acted. Uh, and I think in uh, Airman Stone's opinion, the, uh, the event is over and it's time to move on. Uh, uh, as his commander, I totally non-concur with that assessment. Uh, there are a lot of men and women who got off that train last Friday and went home to their friends and families because of the actions that they took. Uh, they are heroes, plain and simple. And uh, while uh, he is eager, to, he and the others are eager to downplay the importance of that event, I have to tell you that in all my years of service, that is without a doubt one of the purest examples of service before self that I've ever seen. And uh, Airman Stone and to your comrades, uh, uh, job well done and thank you for, uh, for what you did. Finally, on behalf of my leadership, uh, Colonel Dan Shore, who is uh, my uh, immediate commander, uh, Colonel Richard Sheff, who is the 65th Air Base Group Commander, the men and women of the 65th Medical Support Medical Operations Squadron, uh, the larger team lodges, and if you've ever been stationed there, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, we would like to join uh, Airman Stone in thanking all of the agencies who have uh, been involved in providing him and his family support since this, his uh, friends and family support since this event happened. Uh, from the first responders to the health care that he received in France to 
the generosity of the U.S. Embassy in Paris, the governments of Belgium, the governments of France, uh, the governments of uh, the government of Germany for hosting us here in the KMC. This is just beautiful. Um, uh, the uh, uh, General Thomas, who is the commander, our wing commander and commander, commander of the 86th Air Wing, and uh, the men and women of the 86th Air Wing, thank you so much. Uh, you've taken good care of our airmen, and we sincerely appreciate it. Yes, sir. Sir, I'm Don Wood from NBC News, and I hope you pass along to them how proud all of us in the United States are. What kind of critical care experience uh, does Airman Stone have prior to reaching into that wound and squeezing off the, right. what I think is the carotid artery, right? Right. Uh, that's, uh, I, I'm not a doctor, and I'm, uh, it's, it's an artery. <laughs> but uh, 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 Airman Stone is a very young uh, airman, a uh, very young medic in the Air Force. Uh, but from the time that uh, uh, airmen like, uh, or uh, Americans like uh, 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 Air Mr. Stone uh, decide to join the Air Force and come in, uh, from the time they come in, there's training that happens, a basic military training, self-aid buddy care types of training that they receive. Uh, in Airman Stone's case, he matched to become a 4N, which is a medical technician. He goes off to a joint training program that's uh, located at uh, Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, the medics from all branches of the service are kind of trained to the same level. And then uh, at that point, they go off to their phase one training. And in uh, Airman Stone's case, he went to phase one, or I'm sorry, phase two training at uh, Oh, Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. And there, uh, he is rotated through all of the areas. Uh, and so he sees, he visits, he touches all of the areas that he may be working with. But he's never worked in a critical care uh, uh, ward. Uh, the assignment that he had before he came to us at Lodges, he was at David Grant Medical Center, uh, Travis Air Force Base. I believe he was in the pediatrics ward there. Uh, when he came to join us at Lodges, we put him in ambulance services. A again, young, smart, eager, enthusiastic. He was a natural there. And doesn't that make his accomplishment even more remarkable? Uh, I have had the same thought. Listen, uh, how did he have the presence of mind to going from being uh, attacked to being the attacker and then turning that off and becoming a lifesaver? Uh, pretty impressive. Next question. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, Lieutenant Colonel, I thought that um, uh, he was practicing grappling, and I uh, just wanted to know uh, if he said something, how did it help him mentally or physically, because I've uh, read that he choked him out, so was that particularly helpful, or would all the uh, soldiers be able to do that? He, he, uh, he is a student of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. and uh, at, uh, at lodges, uh, there was a small community of devotees of uh, jiu-jitsu, and he fell in with them. Uh, uh, there were a couple of very experienced uh, senior uh, martial artists there. Uh, uh, I'll call out one, Lieutenant, John, uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Carana, who was uh, very skilled. And uh, Lieutenant Colonel Carana kind of took him under his wing and, and helped, uh, helped to sharpen those skills. And uh, I was uh, speaking with uh, Airman Stone last night, and one of the things that he mentioned was that uh, that experience absolutely helped him to understand what he needed to do to subdue the attacker. Yes, ma'am. Hi, sir. I'm Jennifer Savan with Stars and Stripes right here in Kaiser Slaughter. I'm wondering, um, is there any concern about um, Airman Stone's reintegration when the time comes back into his unit after everything he's gone through? Um, on the train, as well as all the attention and fame now that he's has, um, yeah. and also if there's a timeline when that re reintegration might occur. Yeah, we are uh, unsure about the timeline. It will all be driven by his medical condition. Um, reintegration medically and, of course, emotionally, it's a pretty traumatic uh, thing that that they went through. Uh, we've been very fortunate that he was able to come here because not only is he getting the medical care that he needs, but the 86th Medical Group was able to put a, uh, a counselor with him and his family to help to be available in the event that they had any questions or any issues came up. But um, is there concern about it? Uh, 
you know, I would like to say that uh, uh, this time tomorrow everything's going to be fine and he and I are going to hop on an airplane and we're going to go back to Lodges and get back to work. I just don't think it's going to happen that way. It's a process. Uh, we don't know what the timeline is. We'll see how it works out. And it's my understanding he's going to go back to the States before he returns to Lodges. Is that right? We're not sure. Uh, again, we're not sure uh, what the timeline is or what his route of travel will be, what his destination is when he leaves here. But uh, doing what's in the best interest of, of him and his medical condition is, is really, at this point, what matters. Would Airman Stone most like us to know? I know you read the statement, but if you, in your own words, I've never spent that time with him. What does he most want us to know? You know, I think he wants us to know that it wasn't him. I think he wants us to know that it was a team, that it was, uh, that he did what he did because he knew his comrades were going to be behind him. And, uh, and uh, if there's anything that, that he wants all of us to remember, it's that it, this is not about Airman Spencer Stone. This is not about terrific training that he got from the Air Force. This is about him being there with his friends, uh, people that he trusted, and that's what gave him the confidence to act. Is there any chance you're going to meet the others, uh, or is there a, perhaps a reunion of uh, these uh, three heroes scheduled? I don't know what's scheduled, uh, I don't, uh, but specifically I don't know that that is scheduled. I think that at some point what the three of them want to do is uh, they're, they are uh, more than welcome to get in front of the media, but they want to do it as a unit. They want to do it as a team. And so at some point, they hopefully will all be back in the U.S., and that will be, and, the, and, the, and those events will happen. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Hi. Yes. It's my understanding, I read in some story that his nickname uh, is Captain America. Do you know where that comes from? I don't. I don't. I've never heard that his nickname was Captain America. I had another nickname for him, but oh, it wasn't. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, he's a he's a young airman in my unit. Um, we have a lot of airmen uh, that uh, that we take care of, and uh, he's interesting because his physical size alone makes him stand out in in a crowd. Uh, he's he's good natured. He has a good heart about him, uh, and so. Uh, the leadership team at our unit, we know him just by virtue of the fact that he's kind of, you know, many times a larger than life presence in the room. Uh, uh, he's taller than me, I'm telling you that. Yeah, uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but, you know, they, they have a very tight, the airmen have a, have a very tight unit. Uh, they're, uh, they take care of each other. I'm sure they have nicknames for each other. I've never heard Captain America. I chuckle at the thought of that only because uh, I, I just think it's, it's funny. But he is, I think uh, we would all agree that, you know, if you're looking for a nickname, that's probably a good one. He's, you know, he's, he's quick to act, he's confident, physically strong, he's, he's smart. I sound like I'm trying to sell him, I'm really not. But, uh, but that sounds like a, uh, a, a proper nickname for him. Did he stand out in his unit prior to this? Uh, well, like I said, physically he stands yeah. out. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, he, he stand, well, he's like a lot of other airmen that we have. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, smart, young, and enthusiastic. And uh, he, uh, you know, I think, does he stand out in the unit among his airmen peers? Not so much. I'm, I'm fortunate that I command a unit that, uh, that's almost full of airmen stones. And just one more question for me. How, what do the other airmen in the unit, what has been their reaction? Um, what are they saying to you? To yeah. No one is surprised, uh, almost uh, to a person, whether it's uh, one of our uniformed airmen or one of our local national civilians who support, who are a key part of our mission. You could ask anyone and, and uh, you know, the discussion would go something like this. Hey, did you hear what Airman Stone did? And the reaction would be, oh my gosh, you're kidding. Well, that makes sense. I can see that. Yes, sir. Mr. Stone was awarded by the French president or the group around Mr. Stone. Is there also something award or some honor planned by the American side? I understand that at very high levels in the uh, uh, Air Force community, uh, there are discussions about a decoration. I have all ideas that something will be awarded to him. I'm not sure what that is yet. Uh, that hasn't been shared with me. But uh, these are the kinds of discussions I think that the uh, Secretary of the Air Force and the Chief of Staff of the Air Force have.